few days ago, I was working on a logo sequence that would turn this flat logo on the left into this awesome neon logo on the right. And I wanted to share how I made this effect with you, not because I couldn't think of anything better to do, but because I think it's a cool effect that deserves to be shared. Now the very first thing you're going to do is make a copy of your logo, but make it entirely white. Now you're gonna go ahead and export only that artboard as an SVG. Next, delete everything in your scene, especially the default cube, and then go to File, Import, SVG. Now you're gonna import that SVG that you just exported from Illustrator or whatever you're using. So the first thing I did was start converting these curves into meshes. To do that, all you have to do is go into your search menu, type convert to, and then choose mesh from curve. Now I went into edit mode, go up here and choose select, select loops, select boundary loop. Then I duplicated that with shift D and press right click to send it right back to where it was. Now I'm gonna to need to separate it from this object, so I press P, separate, and selection. Do the exact same thing for the other one and you should be okay. Delete those inner parts and you should have something that looks like this. I think the best part about this is that it works for basically any any logo or any text. The next thing that we're gonna do is go into the modifiers tab and add a skin modifier. At first it's gonna look pretty weird, so make sure to just press tab to go into edit mode, press A to select everything, and then control A to scale down the size of the skin modifier. This one can basically be as thin as you need because that's gonna be the inner light part. If you jacked up your logo when you created it, you might have little artifacts like these. I found that the best way to eliminate that is to select some vertices and choose dissolve vertices. Once you're done fixing your past mistakes, go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier. This will really give it that curvature that you really need. Make sure to shade the object smooth, and then once you're happy with the result, go ahead and apply the skin and subdivision surface modifiers. Now in my case, it's time to apply that gradient look but you can make whatever material you want. For the gradient look, I'm gonna go into the shader editor, check this box that says use nodes, and we're gonna edit that material that's applied to the SVG by default. Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna make sure and join all of these together. To do that, select them all and then press Control J. Now select everything and from the top view, press U and project from view. That unwraps this thing so that we can start projecting a texture onto it. Now, speaking of textures, let's go ahead and set that up. Go ahead and add a color ramp node, and before that, place a gradient texture. Connect that to the color ramp, and connect the color ramp to the base color. Go into rendered mode in your 3D viewport so that you're able to see what's going on. As you can see, we have a black to white gradient, which matches what we have in the color ramp. But the real power happens when you press Ctrl T with the gradient texture selected, and as long as you have Node Wrangler enabled, it'll add a mapping and texture coordinate node so that we can really have a lot of control over this. Next, go ahead and edit your color ramp colors to be whatever you want. I really like the blue, however, it's not emitting any light, because we're using a principled BSDF. Now, I could use the emission value in the principled BSDF, I'm going to use another node wrangler function, which is shift s, it allows you to swap any node with another node, and I'm going to swap the principled BSDF with an emission node, that way I have control over the strength of the emission. This is looking good to me, but you can always adjust the color positioning to adjust it to your liking. Now I'm going to move it up a little bit, because we're going to add the ground now. I'm going to press shift a and add a plane, and just scale it up a bit go into the top view, and then position it so it's right in the center of that logo. Now it's time to add some textures onto this ground. I'm gonna use some sort of cyber background. Now there's plenty of tutorials on this topic, but what you're gonna need is a base color, a metallic map, a normal map, and a roughness map for this one. You can find these kinds of textures all over the internet, but textures.com and cc0textures are some of my favorite. When you've got them already in a folder, simply drag them all into the node editor. Drag the base color into the base color input, the metallic into the metallic input, roughness into the roughness input, and the normal, yeah, you get to plug that into a normal map node, and then you get to plug it into the normal input, because it's got to convert that color data into vector data. Anyways, now that that's all set up, you can scale that up and down to your liking, and now make sure to go to Render Properties and switch your render engine to Cycles to increase the suffering of your PC. Now go to the World tab and change the color all the way to black. Now comes the part where your PC is really going to be wheezing. Go ahead and go into Edit Mode, and then duplicate everything by pressing Shift D, and then right click to send it right back to where it was, and you probably don't want to do this in rendered mode, but Go ahead and press Alt S to scale things up and down. Find a size you're happy with, and then once you've got it, go ahead down to the Materials tab, add another material, switch the principal BSDF with the glass BSDF, and then hit the Assign button. Now if you go into render mode, you can see that there's glass around that glowy part. Sick, but ideally it's gonna be a little smoother than this, right? So go to Object and Shade Smooth, and well, that should do the trick. If you want it to be even more smooth, you can always add a subdivision service modifier, but you can expect this to increase render times pretty heavily. That being said, it does make things look much smoother, and it's probably worth it for you. Now the only step is to find some cool camera angles and create some awesome animations. But before you do that, make sure that you always...
Make sure that you always save your work. I personally like to save all the time. It's just a habit of mine that I've gotten into and you should probably be saving all throughout your process. That way if Blender doesn't like something you did, you can minimize the amount of progress that you lose. And finally, when you realize that what you have is not in fact modern hardware, you can head on over to the sheep at Render Farm. I've been testing this out a lot recently. It's a free render farm. All you have to do to earn your right to render projects on here is render 10 frames of someone else's. It really embodies the Blender community and I recommend you check it out. If you thought this was cool, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And just let me know what else you want me to make.